You might be considering 1040.com if you love a flat fee price for filing your federal and state taxes. In this video, we are going to be doing a complete walkthrough and review of 1040.com and whether or not it's the right option for your tax software. Hey guys, this is Justine with the College Investor, investing and personal finance for millennials. Today we are taking a look at 1040.com. The reason why I like this one as a mid-level pricing tax software is there are no surprises when it comes to the cost. It's $25 <laughs> flat fee. It's what you see is what you get, and that includes your federal and state tax return. So we've already answered that question. Is it really free? No, but it's just $25 to get started. So what's new in 2023 with 1040.com? While the software really didn't have too many major enhancements from the previous year, they did keep up with the IRS tax code to keep up with the latest tax law changes, but check out their website. I just wanna point this out because I love a good user experience when it comes to websites and finding things very quickly. And my tax software, online tax software is no exception. So they've branded themselves as the feel good tax company. I love that. Feel good knowing it's done right on time and for one honest simple price of $25. I mean, what more can you ask for? I feel like they did a really good job of just keeping it very simple on their homepage and then you can actually see, you know, exactly what you're getting. All of your tax forms are included with 1040.com, whereas bigger players like H&R Block or TurboTax are really going to break that up into different levels and tiers, and then the more tax forms that you have, the more that you have to pay. So I love this. Also, this is really cool. If you're into uh, socially responsible companies, 1040.com points out here, for the last six years, we partnered with Healing Waters International to help end the global water crisis, and we invite you to join us. That's really cool. You gotta feel good about getting behind a company like this in order to file your taxes. One big drawback that I wanna point out before we actually get into the tax software is that if your employer is not partnered with 1040.com, then you aren't able to automatically import those W-2s. So if that's a deal breaker for you and you really wanna skip the whole keying in every single line item or box on your tax forms, then 1040.com really is not the best option for you because they have very limited import capabilities. Unless they are a partnered employer on those W-2s, that's the only way that you're going to be able to upload any information into the tax software. Otherwise, if you have other forms like 1099 divs, 1099 INTs, any student loan interest forms, HSA forms, all of that you have to input manually. Okay, let's go ahead and just take a look at what's underneath the hood and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, once you get logged in, you're going to see this welcome screen, very similar format to the tax software that I have reviewed in the past in which you'd have this left-hand menu navigation and a summary of your potential refund up at the top. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, they're going to go through kind of this interview style Q&A, which can get a little tedious, but honestly, a lot of the tech software is set up in exactly that way, where they're going to ask you questions about what happened this past year with your income and your expenses. So let's just go ahead and get into the questions here. Let's say we are filing single. Cannot be claimed as a dependent. Okay, so far the personal information is really easy to go through. It's funny though, because they have, as part of the user experience, I know I get hung up on this, but truly this does make a big difference, especially if you have trouble seeing or you're working on a smaller screen. It's interesting that they have everything kind of scrunched in this upper left-hand corner. They really need to make better space and better use of their web browser. That's just a side note, <laughs> but it really does make a difference when you're filing your taxes. So state return is included, no extras. So maximum fund guaranteed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yes, add my state return. 
and save. All right. And let's go ahead and get started on the federal taxes. Now you'll see the left hand menu did open up to include all of the major sections of your federal tax return. So we'll say yes, we have a W-2. And here's where we can add in that information. And then we'll go ahead and add in our compensation. Okay, now that we got the W-2 added, it looks like we've got the option to be guided through the rest of the sections or consider yourself finished through here. But what's really interesting now is that they've popped open a couple of different sections here for the income subsection. So if you had any interest in dividend forms, any investment forms, it looks like you can also uh, add in a 1099 miscellaneous uh, other income or retirement income. So let's say we had some interest, a 1099 INT. Yes, let's go ahead and add that in. Oh, weird. So <laughs> the left hand menu just went away. Okay, it's a little weird. Say this is from Ally Bank. No. No. Okay, let's do interest income $345. Okay, that should be all set. Okay, let's continue. Do you have any dividend income? Let's say that we do. I wonder why the left hand menu went away. That was weird. And here it goes again. I'm not sure why it's wanting to close out of that and then just focus on just this. Again, a lot of white space. They could have really done up this user experience a, a lot differently. I mean, for $25, I guess this is what you get, but I don't know. I feel like they could have done a little bit more upgrades on the actual software because what I saw on the homepage was amazing and this does not reflect the homepage at all. But let's go ahead and add in our div income form. Let's say this was from TD Ameritrade. Okay, let's say we had ordinary dividends of $657, qualifying dividends of 324. So it's interesting how the forms are actually broken up into different screens. So they are kind of forcing you to click through, yes, 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 through every single section. Whereas I've seen other tax software where you actually have the entire form on one screen. So I'm not sure, I think it's a style preference, but if you wanted to be very clear about what information that you were filling into some of these forms, it forces you to take a look at every single screen. This can be a little tedious and time consuming though. So I had to click through at least six different times in order to fill out that 1099 div. So let's say, let's continue. And you can see how that's changed our federal refund. And then obviously I am filling in fake information here because you don't wanna be owing your state $7,000. You wanna get that as close to zero as possible. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we've got the W-2s, the, the 1099s included, any other sections you could include, and then I can click finished with income. Now, if I go back to this, the one thing that I will say about income right here is that there is no summary screen to tell me exactly what I've entered. I can see $100,000 for Bob's W-2, but I can't see exactly how much I've reported on these forms. So a summary section would be nice here. Let's say I don't have any dependents. Now we can go through deductions. So you get to kind of choose how you wanna play this game. Either be guided through all the sections or kind of pick and choose what you, what you know you need to include. If you filed your taxes before or you have a stack of tax forms at the ready, then you can go through the sections and pick out what you need. Instead of going through every single section, which can also be time consuming, you can just grab exactly what you need, input that information, and then click finished with deductions and credits. So let's see what would be some common things here. 
looks like you can do home and property, which will help you claim deductible mortgage interest. Let's do this. Let's say we owned a home and we made mortgage payments on that home and we received a 1098. Yes. Next. Next. Let's see. This is with primary bank. Let's say we paid 800 in interest. Okay, let's move on. Did you pay any property tax? Yes. Let's click next. Oh, okay. The amount you entered here will be added to those amounts. Okay. Bag it up. Interesting. Back, back. Okay. Back. Okay, finish with deductions and credits. That was a little confusing there, so I'm not sure if I filled that out correctly. Uh, if I go back to deductions and credits, yeah, it does not appear that we did that. Oh, here it is. Okay, great. All right, so it doesn't really show you where you've entered in that form because if I go back to deductions and credits, I don't even see it here, but let me click I'm finished. Yeah, this, this would be confusing because you can't actually see where I've entered in that form. It just says, tell us about your home and property instead of listing it out here as a form that I've actually filled out. So this could get a little confusing. I would feel like 1040.com may not be the best option for those who are filing their taxes for the first time or filing their taxes for the first time with additional forms other than a W-2. Let's go through healthcare. Let's say we did not have it through the marketplace. Other tax situations. No. Do you need to make estimated tax payments? Um, oh, okay. This is regarding cryptocurrency. So if we added cryptocurrency and let's say we sold that, you can add it to your return. I need to edit. Yes. Okay, let's move forward. No, do you have any interest? No, finished with federal. Okay, so if you have cryptocurrency, this is not clear whatsoever, but you actually have to go back into the income section and then report that as a 1099B right here. So it's interesting that they talk about other tax situations and list virtual currency there and yet we'd have to input that information in the 1099B. So a little cumbersome, a little confusing, but that is the way you file your, at least your federal return <laughs> with 1040.com. Then you can go into your state specific filing. Those states are typically going to roll out and accept uh, state returns around mid-February. So be on the lookout for that, but you can always upload your federal information first. And then a lot of that gets copied over to your state return anyways. And then you can go through and add in that information or review that information. So that's a look inside of 1040.com. Okay, so as you could tell, I kind of fumbled my my way through it. I eventually figured it out, but honestly, I just feel like the software was a little disjointed, especially when I saw such a clean and beautiful homepage really advertising the tax software. And then when I got inside of it, I was like, oh, this clearly looks like it hasn't been updated in several years in terms of the user experience. Everything was really small and scrunched in the left hand corner of the screen. And I just felt like it didn't do a good job of actually telling me what every thing is. They should have added little help icons or little eye uh, buttons to help you determine what they were talking about in specific sections of your tax return. If you're looking for bargain software, take a look at Cash App Taxes, which is completely free, or Tax Hawk. I think you're going to get a better user experience versus 1040.com. Don't forget, we have complete walkthrough and reviews of all the latest tax software available to you at thecollegeinvestor.com. If you liked this one, please give it a big thumbs up, and we'll catch you in our next video.